everyone. This is Madeline Dale with the Chapter Goddess. And today with me, I have an amazing author for you. I'm going to let him go ahead and introduce himself and tell us a little bit about his books. Hi, Madeline. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Tobin Marks, and I write uh, science fiction fantasy. Um, my latest, actually my debut, is called The Ark of the Apocalypse. And it's essentially a science fiction that morphs into a lot of fantasy that takes into account uh, world events happening today. So I kind of string this all together and um, come up with a story that's it's full of action. And it also leaves you thinking, could this possibly be? I have to agree with that. That the whole time I was reading it, I was like, holy cow, this is so like happening right now. Did you have to do any research on the whole storyline? Um, I, I do a fair amount of research, uh, not necessarily on the storyline. Story I actually wrote this primarily about three years ago before, I mean, we still had global warming and we still had the fires, but not to the extent that we have today. So that the book came out in this particular um, time frame, you know, with the fires raging and, and they're not being put out or can't be put out, uh, the political scene, things like that. Um, I didn't really envision, you know, things coming to this. It just happened to, to come about. And to be honest, I wish it wouldn't because this is just horrific. Um, now, one of the things, of course, that I stressed in the book, uh, as far as the uh, global warming, is that we're running out of fresh water. Without water, we can't survive. So in the extreme, um, in the book, uh, it just simply stopped raining everywhere. And reservoirs, aquifers, everything is drying up, and, and we have um, drought on uh, continental scales all over the world. So naturally, the uh, political powers in, in the book are the same as they are now, basically, uh, America, Russia, and China, vie for the uh, resources that are left. And everyone recognizes, of course, that the world is quickly coming to a point where life is no longer sustainable. So they build an arc ship and uh, send it to a planet that they found, an M-class planet that can support our biology and create a, a colony. Now, the, the, I got to tell you how this whole thing started, Madeline. I wrote a trilogy about five years ago. And um, during the editing process, it, at this time, I, I had to hire my own editors, but I had a very good one. And he said, you know, Mark, I, I, or excuse me, Tobin, <laughs> I really need more information on the family, more background information. I said, well, I can't do it in a chapter or two. You know, us, nobody's are, are um, we're limited to 100,000 words per book. And he says, yeah, I know, but I got to have more. I said, well, the only way I can do it is if I write another book, say a prequel. And he's like, yeah, do it. I'm like, okay, because I'd already thought about this before, you know, kind of out there thinking, okay, well, maybe I should do a prequel because I need a little bit more background information before throwing the readers into the trilogy. Just, you know, they don't know what I know. And I give little blips here and there, but you don't, you know, you can't really do a huge information dump. Um, so, I came up with uh, Ark of the Apocalypse. And when the publisher got involved, um, I had sent them book one of the trilogy, which is, by the way, due out at Christmas, um, Endeavor's Run. And they said, well, what else have you written? And I said, well, I've written the prequel. And they said, send that. So I sent it and they said, oh, we want to go with this first. And I'm like, okay. So the editing process, even though I'd already had an editor and we'd already done like three different edits on it, you know, when a publisher gets involved and their editors get involved, they want to see certain things. And, and um, I'm going to give them a plug. Uh, Boyle and Dalton have, have a very good editor. And this That's guy, it, it, he is ruthless. Absolutely. Take no prisoners, no holds barred. And the book is so much better 
I mean, you know, he, he told me in the last edit on Endeavor's races, Mark uh, <clears throat> Tobin, I don't think you're as funny as you think you are. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I wrote another joke. I, um, what else was I supposed to <laughs> I know I really liked the family. It was intense. They had all this planned out from like the beginning of time and it was crazy. Well, that's true. And now looking back, I, I see uh, Ark of the Apocalypse actually as another trilogy because there's so much more story that could be, uh, it skips ahead fast. I get mm -hmm. it. Um, and, and there are points where the reader, even myself, is left going, well, you know, why didn't I fill that time frame in? Because it would have been really, really interesting. So um, maybe in the future, we'll see if this doesn't get expanded. But yeah, the family is uh, preternaturally powerful. Yes, preternatur they were. They have abilities. And these abilities were given to them by uh, the aliens on the new planet. And they'd seeded life all over uh, the galaxy and had done this with particular families. It was a way for them to, um, w w what's the word I'm looking for? It's a way for them to accelerate evolution. And that was their point. They had a limited time for this species, Homo sapiens, to get where they wanted to be. And even though it was like 100,000 years, that wasn't fast enough. They needed to get them to a, a, a point where they could um, become basically a warrior race for these guys. So uh, they did it in this bloodline. And of course, these abilities didn't really um, translate that well to, say, Renaissance man or, you know, in the Dark Ages. And that was one thing that I just didn't, I barely gave a glimmer yeah. of what this was all about. Um, but in, in what, what happened, and I see this is part of a coming story is that, um, the family is seen as, um, well, for lack of a better word, witches mm -hmm. because they have these powers and how else, you know, if they're not normal, then they gotta be witches. Right. So, um, yeah. And, and their primary, primary ability aside from astral projection and seeing and later on shape shifting and things like this uh is healing and that was kind of what um you know the the wiccas would would have happen you know they would heal people and then they go well they she healed me so she must be a witch and they burn them. so uh anyway that's kind of the background of the family in a very fast version i love it so I have, I am curious, where did you get the creative idea for the alien species? Because that was like their makeup, that fascinated me. How did you come up with that? I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, how do you come up with any of this? So, well, I wanted to make them, um, they had to be fragile mm -hmm. because they create all these species throughout the galaxy to do everything for them. The, you know, they're basically the brains of the outfit. But everybody else has to do the work. On on um, on Aquius, they created the lizard people, who, of course, are the bad guys. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. they're lizards. So, um, and they were able to do the mining for them of, of the resource that they needed that only Aquius and, and all the planets in the galaxy have in abundance. So, I said, okay, well, how can I make them fragile? You know, and I thought, well, if they have um, gas for blood and they're translucent and they actually float around, they may be three meters tall, but they don't have any feet because they float everywhere, then they've got to be fragile. That's, that was kind of the premise. Where I came up with it, Oh, Madeline, I don't know. <laughs> and then when I got to that part, I was like, what? Whoa. <laughs> so when I first came across it, it like made me pause. I was like, I had to reread it. Like, okay, this is really cool because it was something I haven't seen before. So well, I liked it, it. You should have seen the editor's comment when he came to this part because he was completely unprepared. And all, all of a sudden it was like, 
okay, yeah, didn't see this coming. Let's <laughs> let's explore this more. So yeah, in the other books, um, I touch on the Nomander, who who are the aliens, the advanced aliens, uh, a lot more. However, I don't really give the reader. Um, well, again, I'm, I'm struggling for a word here. It, it's a word the editor used. It, in other words, you know, you, you want some kind of um, ending. You know, you've got to be able to create a conflict. I mean, I've got them strictly as puppet masters throughout the trilogy. I'm actually writing a second trilogy uh, based on, the, on that series called The Hope Progression. The trilogy is called The Hope Prophecy. The Hope Progression we touch on it a lot more and get into exactly who they are and they become more part of the story than just being observers from on high. You know, they actually interact with, um, specifically with Nadia because a thousand years later, you know, at the very end, oh, I guess I shouldn't do, just tell you that, huh? Yeah, you'll have to read that part. I was like, oh. All I'm gonna say.